Before I begin showing you guys the progress I made on that bad boy right there, I just wanted to take a few seconds right here to share some great news. With your amazing support, I was able to get a new computer and now the channel can keep going. Yeah, you guys are amazing and you saved me when I needed the most. So yeah, I just wanted to say a huge thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. And now let's get to the video. The first topic of this video is of course the weapon, the energy weapon. And to make it, I'm thinking of using this USB charger right here and this very interesting gribbly from a dead printer. That kind of looks like a heat sink or something. The USB charger had a weird shape that I removed with a hacksaw and then using a caliper I took some measurements from it and made an extension piece to go on its place. I wanted the heatsink looking gribbly to go over the charger, but as you can see it is much bigger than it. And so I had to take care of this gap right here, which I did using more 3D printed pieces. I took some time and I made pieces that fitted perfectly. And this is the beauty of combining some 3D printing with some cool looking gribblies. I then of course glued everything together, but at that stage it is very crucial to keep everything in line and be as precise as possible. Now I was hoping to attach the weapon to the head using a couple of embedded nuts and some bolts. But that was because I forgot that I had these beauties in my shop. These are actually some fake Lego pieces that work much better to attach some simple structures like the weapon. At that point I felt that the front of the head was too flat and so I began creating some structures to transition the shape from that flat spot to the weapon. And I did that as you saw using a couple of laser cut acrylic shapes and these gusset shapes that I print in bulk and that I save so I can use in projects here in my shop. Then as you can see I've glued the fake Lego pieces both on the head and on the weapon and now I have a nice attachment point. Now the USB charger had a couple of rectangular holes that I didn't really like, so I decided to remove it. I begin by marking the surface using a laser cut acrylic shape as a guide and then using my Dremel tool I removed most of the plastic there. Now let me tell you, that wasn't an easy task, but eventually I got there with time and patience. Now to go on the inside of it, I made this custom piece right here with a couple of holes and on each hole I decided to use a couple of paint caps that I felt looked so good. I then trimmed the paint caps to size and that whole structure right there could be glued back to the charger. From there I went looking for some cool extra shapes to go on the weapon. And in my collection of acrylic shapes I found something that would look amazing. I glued it on the top of the heatsink piece using CA glue and on the top of it I added this pill shape right here which is a gribbly that looks so cool. The energy weapon kind of sits to the right of the head and so on the left side I added a cool looking gribbly and this right here is the result. Then I combined a couple of weird looking gribblies to create this sort of a camera or radar that will sit on the left of the head. Now this structure will be attached to the head of the robot using a simple 3mm metal pin. So I marked on the surface what I wanted that hole to be and I made it using my drill. But I decided to actually add an extra fitting on the surface of the head so things look better once this project is painted. Now as you can see there's a couple of holes on the left side of the head and instead of simply covering it with some epoxy I decided to actually create a flat spot. I'm not sure exactly why but I feel this looks super cool. 
Also, at that point, I found a couple of Kinder Egg shells in my collection of Griblis, and as this project has a ton of round and spherical shapes, I felt like Kinder Eggs would look amazing with it. I made this custom holder for it and using a couple of bolts where I hid the features using some resin printed griblis, I'll attach it to the holes I made on the ring that goes outside of the robot. Then of course it was time to apply a coat of primer to the energy weapon and also to the Kinder Egg tanks. And this project finally had all the basic structures and the only thing left to do was the final detail pass. The detailing phase is a super time consuming but also very fun process. And while we're here, let me actually tell you how you can help this channel keep going. And again, I want to say thank you to everyone who helps and has helped me on Patreon and on Coffee. But yeah, if you want to join these amazing people, I have a couple of links on the description box. Recently, I've opened up a Gribbly shop on my Patreon page, so if you want to grab yourself some cool looking Gribblies, check the links on the description box. You can also simply subscribe to this channel, that also helps a lot, and follow me on other social medias. Now let's go back to the video. On the detailing phase, I want to reach a certain level of detail. Also, I want to have in mind that some areas of the robot will be full of tiny little details, while others can be less populated, let's say. So for instance, right here on the body, I'm keeping it kind of clean, but on the head and also on the energy weapon, I want to make it as detailed as possible. It is crucial to have that in mind when designing some uh, cool looking machines. You really want to have different levels levels of detail across your design because that helps the viewer understand the shapes and also gives it character. Also I should say right here that this project is very different from what I did before, especially if you compare it with the Flamingo Combat Robot let's say, which is super full of hard edges and flat spots. And that really changes the choices I make on the detailing phase, like you saw a bunch of half spheres being glued to the surface of the model, and that is uh, just for this specific project. At this point, a dear patron of mine suggested on our Discord channel that I added some weight uh, to the back of the head. And this is what I did. I made this uh, cool looking shape right here that will attach the back of the head and keep things more balanced. I was very happy with the level of detail I got going for the body and for the head and so I primed everything and this right here is the result. Now the only thing left to do before the painting process is to add some detail to the legs but that's for the next episode. As always, thanks for watching.